My name is Alistair Lee. In this video, I'm going to walk through setting up and configuring your event emails using Adobe Connect Events. Configuring your email options is one of the steps in the event creation wizard in Adobe Connect. It's also something you can do after you've created your event, but I'd recommend doing it before you publish your event. Publishing your event triggers all of the email invitations to get sent out. So let's take a look at an existing event that I've already created. I'm going to go ahead and click on that event and then click on email options. And you can see here, there are quite a few different email options that are available out of the box in Adobe Connect. 13 in all, including these four custom triggers. You can decide when each of these emails goes out. And in fact, you probably won't send all of these different emails out. For example, if your event is set to automatically approve users, you don't need things like the denied email that gets sent out, or you don't need to notify users that their approval is pending because that approval happens automatically. There are a few email options that I always have on for my events. I typically send event invitations. This, of course, relies on you uploading some participants as you're setting up the event in the participant management step. The notify users when approved for event is the most important email option. It's the one that I always have on because this is the email that gives your recipients details about the webinar or the event itself. It also includes the link to attend the event. So this is an important one to keep on notifying users when they've been approved. I typically turn on the reminder to send people an email before the event starts. It can be sent out the day before or even a few hours before if you'd like. And it often means that a higher percentage of people that said they would attend will actually attend your event. The one just above it, show reminder when updates need to be sent, is an email that gets sent out if you've made some changes to the event. If you've had to move the date and time, for example, that's the email that will be sent out to let everybody know about those changes. Hopefully it's not an email you need, but it's certainly an email that you can set up. You can also set up thank yous that happen after the event. You can set separate emails to people who registered but didn't attend the event. You can also notify the event managers when participants attend the event. In addition to the out of the box event options, you also have a number of custom triggers. These can be used, for example, if you want to send out more than one reminder. Maybe you want to send out a reminder a week before as well as a day before. So you can set up a custom trigger to set up additional emails that aren't part of the out of the box options. Let's quickly take a look at some of the options for these event emails. I'm going to click on the customize button. We can configure these. At the very bottom of this dialog, you'll see a preview of what your email is going to look like. Now, not all of the information will be there. We use these runtime variables to add some of that information at runtime. But this will give you a really good idea of what your email will look like when it goes to the different users. If we want to edit the look and the feel, as well as the content of these emails, we need to edit the template. That's something we're going to cover in a different video. For now, let's take a look at configuring the emails themselves. Starting at the top of this dialog box, I've got a drop down list box for the email triggers. This is just a quick way to navigate to a different type of email. So right now I'm on the event invitation. If I want to go to the reminder email, I can do that simply by clicking on it in this drop down list box. The recipients field is typically not something that you can adjust, but it lets you know who the event emails are going to be going to. In this case, it's the event invitation. It's going to be going out to everybody who's been invited to the event. If you'd like to include additional recipients in the blind carbon copy field, you can add their email addresses into this text box. Next, you can specify when these emails should go out. Adobe Connect will automatically default to a specific date and time based on the date and time of your event, but you can adjust that date and time by setting something up that's new. You can also set a time that's relative to the event itself. And this is something that comes in really handy when you're sending out a reminder. By default, Adobe Connect will send something out 24 hours, but you can adjust that to be a couple of days out or even a couple of hours before your event. You can see here a drop down list box lets you change between hours, days, weeks, and months. The reply to is set by default to your email address. You can also set it to a do not reply email address. And event administrators can add additional options. As you can see, I've done here, I've got a marketing department. 
Event Administrator can do this by clicking on Event Administration. We can do this in a separate tab here. And then going to Email Aliases and creating a new email alias by giving it a name and an email address. This shields the actual email address from the users receiving the email. They'll see the alias name rather than the email itself. And those options will show up as you're configuring your email options. Here we can see the subject and we're using a runtime variable to automatically populate the event name as the subject of the email that's going to be sent out. We can identify the email template which again, we'll cover in a different video. And we've got the option to include an attachment that automatically puts the event in somebody's Outlook calendar or Apple calendar. That attachment text is located right here. So this text in this text box doesn't affect the text in the email itself. Rather, it is the text that somebody will see when they open that calendar attachment. You've got the option not only to include the calendar attachment, but also to request responses or not. If you don't want to receive all of those accepts and declines, you may want to turn that off. You can also see there are a number of different runtime fields that can be used in the Outlook attachment. So if you want to include something like the speaker name, the audio conference details, all of those can be included by simply using these runtime fields. Once you've made all of those changes, you can click Save. You can also send yourself a test email for all of the different email options that you've turned on to see the look and the feel in your own email inbox. In addition to the test email button, you'll also notice a download email report. This is going to be a report that becomes extremely valuable after you've published your event. It will tell you who the emails have been sent to. It'll also give you an idea of any bounce backs that happen. So you can get some insight into how many emails have gone out and how many have been received. Once we save our changes here, we're ready to publish our event. And as I said, publishing your event, which you can do on the event information page. If your event isn't already published, you'll see a publish button down here where it says status. That will trigger the event emails to start going out, assuming it's past the date that you've set in your email configuration options. That's how to set up and configure your event emails in Adobe Connect. Thanks for your time.